Hello, this is Andrew with DPS, and today I want to walk you through one of our most popular PDF white papers, and that's how do you mediate your legacy SNMP to SNMP v3. We've seen a lot of phone calls. This has been a hot topic for us in the last couple of years, and so we decided to get a white paper out on it. And the issue has been security mandates. You have a rule, a, a corporate policy, maybe a government mandate that says you must use encrypted SNMP v3. We don't want unencrypted SNMP traps flying around the network anymore. Now that presents a challenge because you probably have a lot of gear. Network equipment can last 10 years, 20 years, sometimes even more than that. So how do you handle all this equipment that sure it supports SNMP, but it just can't do encrypted SNMP v3. There's never going to be a firmware update or anything like that. It's just never going to happen with this piece of gear. So what can we do to make that compatible so that we don't have to just tear it out and buy a bunch of new equipment? How can we preserve our investment? So let's take a look. This paper was written by Marshall Den Hartog, our president, and I'll be sharing with you some of the ideas that he's got here. You can certainly also download this PDF on our website. I just wanted to walk you through some of the key points here in a video. First thing, these pie charts are pretty powerful. In 2008, you can see that 87% of SNMP equipment that was sold didn't support V3. So just about all the equipment you were buying about 10 years ago didn't support V3. So then 2012 rolls around and a massive shift has happened. V3 just took the industry by storm. 77% of sales all of a sudden now are supporting V3 and there's still about a quarter that don't. Now that's not to say that SNMP v3 equipment only supports v3. It is backward compatible. But if you can support SNMP v3, then at least you're able to work in a secure v3 environment if you have that kind of a mandate. And by 2017, 92% versus 8%. Almost all of it supports SNMP v3. And whoever was writing the standards at your company that said you must use SNMP v3, I guess they could be forgiven if this were the way the world works. But your equipment lasts for 10 years, 20 years, or more sometimes. So it's still out there, and you've got a big investment in it. You can't just toss it out. So how can we make it work? There's a bit of a discussion here if you're an executive, if you're a, a manager, if you're a technician or a system operator, just addressing some of the concerns you probably have and some of the answers that you're going to find and some of the solutions we can offer to you. So take a look at that if you download the PDF. This graph is much like the pie charts that we just saw, but it projects it across time. The pie charts are interesting. They showed a transition, but we didn't really think that they showed the gravity of the situation the way that this does. So there are 17 years represented here from 2001 to 2017. So if you bought all of your equipment, 100% of what you have deployed right now in 2016 or 2017, great. That 8% figure is the amount that you likely have that doesn't support SNMP v3. And that's a small amount if you had to rip that out and replace it. But what if you started buying in 2010 and evenly spaced all your purchases that are still out there today across those years? You could expect that you would be in the high teens as far as your non-SNMP v3 percentage. But go back a little more. How about... A decade and a half that'll take us back in here now we're crossing 50 percent most of our equipment doesn't support snmp v3 so a lot of companies find themselves in this kind of scenario where you have a lot of legacy equipment and it's still working it just doesn't support v3 so what are you going to do i always like to include a brief introduction to snmp this is actually pulled from our core SNMP tutorial, which is a different white paper. So I encourage you to check that out. I talk about the difference between the SNMP versions and some of the basics of the different command types and how managers and agents interact. So take a look at that. I talked about how you can't just tear things out and we call that a forklift swap out of DPS where you just go in and rip everything out and replace it. And that's just not going to work. It's expensive. You have to retrain everybody on new gear and Everything that you've just put in is going to be out of date eventually. We see some of that with cellular modems, just in a, in a different kind of scenario that we experience here at DPS. If we put a cell modem on some of our devices, 
one of our RTUs might last 10 or 20 years, and you see 2G turn to 3G, turn to LTE, and so on. And what's the world going to look like in five years or 10 years? So things just change so fast. And so you often need to adopt a component mindset instead of having everything all in one when standards are changing. So that's not even going to solve the problem. You employ V3 today, who knows what's coming down the line in five years, 10 years, 15 years. So there are better strategies that are going to address that kind of dynamism in the industry where everything just shifts so fast. And the strategy that's going to do that is ultimately where we take your old equipment that only supports V1 or V2C, it goes into some kind of mediator device. And this might have one NIC or two NICs. If it has two NICs, that's great. You can take in SNMP through the one. The traffic doesn't route between, but then it builds SNMP v3 secured traps, and then it sends them up to your SNMP v3 manager. And in that way, you sort of cut the problem off, and you're not sending unencrypted SNMP across the network. There might just be an incredibly small local LAN in the room, and then when things leave the building and go across the wider network, they are secure SNMP v3. Well, we break down five dangers of unencrypted SNMP just to be sure you have a clear picture of what you're up against. So there's, of course, terrorism is the number one pe thing people probably think about in terms of security, and especially at utilities like power utilities or, or water. There's a lot of public organizations and just serving the public in a way that is vulnerable to terrorism that really does, in fact, make you a target. I mean, you never know. It's a, it's a low probability thing, but matching up with government mandates that are designed to ensure security is probably a really good idea. So V3 can help you do that. Outages are some of the more common things. It's not just people who are trying to get in and damage your network, but random things can go wrong. And if SNMP v3 and SNMP are working together in a cohesive monitoring system, that's a much better way to manage your network than to have all sorts of different protocols, whether they're different versions of SNMP or entirely different protocols like Modbus or DNP. To have all those flying around your network with multiple incompatible systems is just not very good. It's possible that if there's a regulation that you're not complying with regarding SNMP v3 that you could face a fine, legal liability if something goes wrong, and uh, like I said, good old-fashioned operator confusion. So it's tough to work with multiple versions of protocols. So just getting to a standard that your people at the NOC Center are working with is always a good idea. So how do you actually convert? There's really two major option A, option B options here. And one is to go to a central master station. This is a little more convenient, but a little less secure. So if this might work, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So you have some SNMP devices out here, maybe some that are doing V1, some that are doing V2C. And then these are going to go to a mediator of some kind. Our team on LNX, for example, is a multi-protocol master that can do mediation. So that would just be taking in SNMP from some quantity. It could be a couple, it could be a dozen, could be a couple hundred of devices, and then processing them, taking those traps, turning them into SNMP v3. So this is conversion, but this whole section below is unsecured. So you have to decide, is that significant enough to warrant having a different solution? So that'll take us to option B. And option B is more secure, even though it takes more deployments. So what you do here is, this is the first one I described a couple pages back, where you have some older SNMP devices out at different remote sites, and at each one, you deploy some kind of a mediator device that's going to do that same function that the Tmon did back here, except it never leaves the building. So that's just an advantage because the SNMP unencrypted traffic never leaves the building. So that's a um, much more secure way to go. You just have to have a mediator at each site. So it can be a little more expensive, but equipment like this, we often hear in a big project where a lot of different build outs are happening, new sites are rolling out. Equipment like this tends to be referred to as rounding error. It's just not that expensive compared to the advantages you can gain. So the ROI is still pretty good, even if you go with option B, and this is certainly the more secure option give you a little bit of guidance here on this page about how to choose an alarm remote because it's still an RTU even though SNMP v3 or no there's still some things about capacity and what you want to monitor and how to use sensors that are important so I walk you through some of that here and on the back we talk about some of the equipment that we have available that you can use for this kind of a challenge whether it's using a net guardian device to do in the building mediation or using the team on, like I mentioned, to take a segment of the network and then convert it to V3. 
And sensors are always good. These little bus powered sensors we call D-wire. You can do them for temperature, or humidity, or vibration, lots of different things. So I encourage you to download this white paper. It's available on www.dpstele.com. You can go there and give it a download. And there's a whole host of other white papers too. So if you like this one, we have about half a dozen that talk about different types of SNMP, whether it's troubleshooting or just understanding the protocol at a basic level, understanding the MIB, that's M-I-B, the MIB file that dictates the structure of SNMP communication. So we've got a lot of those. We've got SCADA tutorials. There's some things about microwave and some legacy protocols. So just head on down to our website and check that out. And if you'd like to give us a call, our phone number here, you can call 1-800-622-3314. If you're outside the United States, the US number without the 1-800 is 559-454-1600. If you hit the front desk and you wanna to talk to me, my name is Andrew, you just ask them for me and they'll put you right through.